On Saturday, September 26, 2020, the National Prayer March will be held at the Lincoln Memorial, and Franklin Graham will be leading it. Franklin Graham is the son of the late Billy Graham. Uh, Many of you probably already know him. Now, this article is from the Christian Post. So the, the title here is Franklin Graham Ahead of National Prayer March. He said, the U.S. is crumbling and God is only hope. Indeed, the U.S. is crumbling. Now, you read through the scriptures. If you read through history in a spiritual way, you'll see a pattern that happens. Now, there are different waves. Uh, Some of you might know of the sine wave. You might know of the square wave. You might know of the triangle wave. What happens throughout history is like a sawtooth wave, and this is how it goes. Now, people start out, the people of God start out humble and lowly. So they start out, you know, kind of like down here. And because of their humility and because of their obedience, God blesses them and they're going higher and higher. God continues to bless them and they go higher and higher. And at a point, there's a point that comes when they become proud because of their blessings. They forget God because things are too easy for them. They go into idleness. You know, it says in the scriptures that one of the sins of Sodom was idleness. They had it so easy. Near the top of this wave, uh, people have it just too too good. They, they're pampered. They're spoiled, okay? And because of that, pride comes in. And when pride comes in, sin inevitably comes in. And because of sin, God gets angry, and God strikes them down, and they start all over again. So it's like they start out at the bottom, they climb up and up and up, and they're blessed. They're, they continue to be, to be blessed because of their humility and their obedience. And then at some point, they, it turns into pride and sin, and God strikes them down, and it goes all over again. It's a cycle that keeps on going all over again. So in the U.S. and in a lot of of the world right now, we are on the top part of this pattern. We are on the top part of this wave. We are just on the verge of tipping the scales. And so, yes, the U.S. is crumbling. This is foretold. Uh, Jesus said that a lot of things like this would happen. Nation will rise up against nation. In the original Greek, it actually means ethnic group will rise up against ethnic group. So there are a few things I want to point out here. Um, Now, uh, Mr. Graham here said, he said, I don't see our nation able to go much further unless we repent. Powerful, powerful statement. And this reminds me of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let me just read this for you. It says, this is God speaking. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways... Then I will hear from heaven and be merciful to their sins and heal their land. The world needs this today. The USA needs this today. Canada needs this. Europe needs this. So many nations in this world need to repent, turn from their wicked ways, call upon God. He goes on to say, for many in the church today, they're comfortable That's the problem. They're too comfortable. And a lot of our pastors don't want to rock the boat, Graham said. Many will not speak out on hot-button social issues, insisting such topics are political when they are moral matters where churches must be bald. I know of a pastor that I spoke to not that long ago when it comes to speaking out on these issues that that, uh, Graham is talking about here. He said to me, well, you know, um, you know, we're all sinners. And, you know, if we speak out, if we do anything, it's not going to do any, it's not going to do any good. It's not going to, uh, the best thing to do is just to ignore it, just to ignore it and, and it will go away. That's not what we're called to do. That's not what Jesus called us to do. Jesus called us to be the salt and the light. He called us to change the world for the better, not to sit back and watch things happen. You know, uh, Albert Einstein said, the world will not be destroyed by evil people, but the world will be destroyed by good people who just sit back and watch it happen. And then there's another quote from Edmund Burke, and I'll paraphrase that, that the only way that evil can triumph 
is when good men do nothing. We are called to influence the world, not to let the world influence us. Franklin says, yet because they have ignored such great sin and the responsibility to speak against it, he doesn't know if there will be revival. Graham goes on to say, I just sense there is something moving in our country. I don't believe that our country is going to be spared from God's judgment. We are not a Christian nation. We are a secular nation, and the secularists are wanting to strip God out of everything, he said. Maybe this election could possibly slow that down, he added, but we know there's going to be a one-world system one day. We know that people aren't going to be able to buy, sell, or trade unless they have the mark of the Antichrist. We know that there will be a great war. And I think everybody senses this today. There is something big brewing in the spiritual realms. I think we're kind of in that period of time on God's clock where some of these things might just be beginning to unfold. To say that we're not going to be able to reset God's clock in the sense where he's going to change his mind, no, it's written. But he might delay just a little bit. I've got 12 grandchildren and four children, and I know that the America that I grew up in, they'll not have an opportunity or chance to see unless God intervenes, he concluded. We need to be prayer warriors like never before. There's never a time in history where God doesn't move without prayer. And God will move in this day and in this hour. We have to pray.